15. 14. And what did verse number 14 tell us last week? Each one, but each one is tempted by his own what? Epithemios. By his own lust. That's built in. And it's, it's right there. It comes with the Adamic nature. Uh, we looked at the word uh, uh, kakos. Remember what kakos was? Remember those kakos? And, and there are some other words for bad in Greek. Kakos means the Adamic bad. All right? And Ponario, that one there is practiced evil. Kakos is, the, is that evil, that bad, which comes with the Adamic nature. All right? Well, all of that is in this epithemia. This is lust. And it talks about it talks about in the last few verses the will of man. Will. That will is is in your mind, isn't it? Now, it says the uh, the lust, having been aborted. All right, having been aborted. This word abortion, right? At Sila Pusa, uh, it uh, it 
Well, it conceived is what it means. This this word conceived here. Uh, having conceived, and the idea here is is like a, a woman conceiving from a man. Uh, a, uh, a new entity is begun. All right? Jumped ahead of myself with the abortion business. Having conceived, it bears, ticte, it bears sin. All right? It births. The word birth there, we uh, we get the idea of a born son out of that word ticte there. All right? Born son. It delivers. It brings forth. It brings forth sin. Sin. Now, what does the word sin mean? Sin. Trespass of the law. Well, what do you hear preachers usually say about the word hamartia? Come on, somebody's bound to hurt it. About the word of what? The word hamartia. What does it mean? What do they usually say it means? No, that's what it means. <laughs> that's what it does mean. She that's what it right does mean. She's got it right. Mm -hmm. They usually says it missed the mark. It means to oh, miss the mark. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh. Chafa in Hebrew means that. And, and some of the lexi lexicons cross-reference Chafa in the Greek as hamartia. And and this other word in Hebrew does mean to miss the mark, but it does not mean um, uh, Amartya does not mean that. And you'll hear that. And they'll say, I told one preacher one time, big shot preacher, he says, well, brother, that's what it says in the lexicons. I said, the lexicons are wrong. Go look at the Hebrew. And then look at the Greek. Study for yourself the etymology of that word. And you will not find Mr. Mark. It means to go out of bounds. It has the idea of uh, floodwaters. What does a river do? Well, a river guides water. A river guides water. There is a channel down there that guides water. When there's a flood, what does that happen? The river banks are overflown. All right? And this word means to go out of bounds. It's uh, Latin, I believe it is, amario. It means to go out of bounds. And the idea of being going out of bounds is going out of bounds and destroying. Now, God has a plan for our lives. And it is a, a walk. A Christian walk. The Native American, the Lakota people, used to say that a person needed to walk the red road. The red road is what they would call it. And they had a, uh, a sweat lodge. And you would face, the road would face going east into the sweat lodge. They'd go in there and they'd listen for the voice of God and God's guidance for their lives. And they'd walk this red road. And as they go down the red road, they leave all of themselves behind and say, Lord, I'm listening to you. You know what? we got a better guidance than that system. we got a better guidance system than that. we got the inspired Word of God. We've got the real thing. Now, we need to walk that road that God puts us. When we go out of bounds, what happens? We hurt ourselves. No. It's, I mean, thou shalt not lie, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not commit adultery. And Jesus really bore a lot on that in his ministry, didn't he? He talked about that. Why? What do these things do in your life? They complicate your life. They really cause you problems, don't they? Every one of them. Thou shalt not covet. What do you do when you covet, brother? Now, miss the mark and out of bounds in, your, in, in, in theology does not really mean the same that thing. There's a word in the Hebrew for to miss the mark, which is sin. But this word in the New Testament, hamartia, is not equivalent to that. This one means to go out of bounds. This one goes beyond. Peripatio is another word in Greek for trespasses. It is closely related to that. That shows the action of walking beside, outside of the trail. This one has the idea of a river or a channel or a canal overflowing and cause destruction. We go out of boundary. And God has a boundary for us. To, to live in. Jesus Christ walked that boundary and walked that road. We know what it is, don't we? We have it in the Ten Commandments. And this is something that's so beautiful. We have the Ten Commandments. Why should we study the law of God? Why should we study it? Has it been nailed to the cross? Yes. It's been nailed to the cross. Why should we look at the Sabbath? What was the Sabbath? It was a time to worship God. All right, let me look at the word sabbaton. All right, too. The word Sabbath. That word means completion. It means a week. That's what it literally means, a week. Sabbath means a week. It 
That's the end of our complete week. Okay? Sabbath. Israel worshipped God on the Sabbath and they set aside that day for a day of rest. Who is our Sabbath today? Christ. 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 If anybody worked in the Old Testament, if they worked on the Sabbath, what was to happen to them? They were to be stoned. Because why? It was blasphemy because God rested. God gave them a day of rest. We ought to remember that. All right, the law of Moses. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not covet. Thou shalt not lie. Thou shalt not commit perjury. What did all of these uh, uh, sins, what was the penalty for them? Sin is death. brings forth death. Death. All right, death. Death was the penalty. Why should we study the law? Mirror. To show us what we've been freed from. To show us what we've been freed from. Isn't that beautiful? Is there anybody here that lived a life so good that you could walk into the presence of God? <laughs> That's a joke, isn't it? Yes. But there are people in the world today that say that. Lord, move over. Here I come. Now there's two. <laughs> There, there are people that believe that. There are people... I, I went to church with people say they hadn't sinned for 30 years. Hmm. Not really. I heard them say that, brother. That's what you call holiness, Luke. Is that brother, we need to remember what we were saved from. What are you saved from? The slavery of sin. Because you're a slave to sin. When God's Spirit comes into your life and you're born again, born from above, you're saved from this sin from the uh, attraction of sin. Well, not so much the attraction because we're still attracted to it, but from the power of sin. Now it says lust. When you hold something upon your mind, then, now you have to hold it upon your mind. You have to think about this. You know, if he was an alcoholic, I'd stay away from the uh, liquor stores and the bars and stuff. You know, if, 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 if I was addicted to, to pornography, I sure wouldn't go down to these places where they have pornography or, or put on the Playboy channel or something in my television. Because you know what you'd be doing? You'd be holding that upon your mind. That's, that's the wrong thing to do with it. Well, when, it, you, when you put this on your mind and your will yields to uh, lust, then there is a conception that takes place. A conception. And it bears hamartia. It bears, it conceives, and it brings forth and births sin. And the sin, having uh, matured, fully materialized, it brings forth death. Now this word is an abnormal birth there, apokeo, apokeo. This is a this is an abortion, an abortion. It uh, sin sometimes brings forth early death, doesn't it? It does in people's lives. Sin does. I've heard people uh, people lived. I'm gonna. Uh, live hard and die young. And they do sometimes, don't they? Have, does this relate to the security of the believer? What, what do you mean? Uh, does this relate to security of the believer? I mean, are we talking about a Christian doing this or are we talking about someone who has never been saved? Well, okay. Uh, you know, I mean, Lost people do this all the time, don't they? Yeah. Okay. Now, how about a child of God? Now, Paul, or, uh, James is going to talk about hamartiogenic illness, and he's going to talk about, about hamartiogenic uh, death. Now, uh, hamartiogenic illness, what, what does the word hamartia mean? Sin. All right, sin. All right. Sin caused illness. Can a person get sick because of sin? Absolutely. You can. You can get sick because of sin. Sin, sinning can make you sick. All right. Can sin cause death? Yes. All right. What did uh, uh, Paul said to, to the church, Corinthian church? Turn them over for the destruction of the flesh. Turn them over to the devil for the destruction of the flesh, that their spirit might be freed. 
A child of God that sins makes himself miserable. Your spirit is vexed. There was there is a guy in the uh, in the Old Testament. His name was Lot. Remember him? Was there anything in the Old Testament that told you Lot was born again? No. Go to the New Testament. You have to go to the New Testament to figure out that Lot was even saved. All right. Now, what did Lot do to his righteous soul? He vexed his righteous soul. All right. Well, did he cause himself a lot of hardship? He sure did. And every time when we sin, we cause our, if we're saved, we cause ourselves vexing. We vex our spirit. We vex the spirit of God that dwells in us. All right? This child, this sin that is conceived, brings forth death. Romans 6 and 23 says what? Uh, the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life of Jesus Christ our Lord. For the wages of sin is death. This is where we do cross references right over there. Psalm 7 and verse 14. Psalm 7 and verse 14. Psalm 7 14. Romans 6 and 6 and Colossians 3 and 5. These are all cross-references to this verse. This is a very foundational verse of the Bible. Psalm 7, what? 14, Psalm 7, 14. Have you, you got it? that, brother? Yeah. Yes. Behold, he travails with wickedness, and he conceives mischief and brings forth falsehood. All right. We, when we fool with sin, we do it to our own detriment, don't we, as a child of God. Now, a person that's lost they just go out there and just water in it like a hog and he's just happy like a hog. But you're not going to be happy sinning. God is not going to let, let you be happy sinning if you've been born again. You're not going to do the things that you did when you were lost. It's not going to happen. And we're going to get into that a little bit later on. All right? Uh, 1 in verse 16 now. May. 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 Blanaste. Adelphoi. Adelphoi. Mu. Agapetoi. Agapetoi. All right. Not a particle of negation. All right. I think that's on page 268 in the analytical lexicon. If I remember right. Particle of negation. Not ye be led astray. Don't be led astray. We get a word planet from this word. What is a planet? What's the class? Isolated body. It's a body. All right. What does this body do? If you go out at 8 o'clock every evening and look up in the sky, can you see a certain, a, a certain planet in the same place? Yeah. No. Huh? It'll be exactly right. where it's supposed to be, though, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Because it has a pathway. It has a road. It has a road. Here we go back to the road with the idea of Hamartia. All right? When you stay in the pathway, you stay in the footsteps of Jesus. When you go out of the pathway... You're, you're led astray. Here we have a word to be led astray. Phoneste. Third person plural. Present, indicative, active, or passive. Not ye be led astray, brothers. Adelphoi. What does the word adelphoi mean? All right. Brothers. But what does the word delphi? Huh? Delphi. Delphi. Philadelphia. Womb. Delphi is womb. Delphi is womb. Adelphos or Adelphi, that means from the same womb. All right? They're birthed of God. These are people that are birthed of God. Don't be led astray, born brothers and sisters that have been born. All right? Of me. You hear that in Philadelphia. Yeah, Philadelphia. Philo is I love and Delphi. Uh, brotherly love. Love brothers is what in the Philadelphia means. Love brothers. Philo-Delphia. Hmm. Philo-Delphia. I always heard Delphos was referring to a city. Philos was brotherly love, therefore a city of brotherly love. So that's what it means. All right. Brotherly, it means, Adel uh, Philadelphia means Philo, love brothers. Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Right. My wife's name means love. Delphi, it means womb. 
Delphi, all right? Delphi means womb, and ah means from the same womb. So that if you're from the same womb, you're a brother or a sister, aren't you? That's right. That's, now, these are real good. This is etymology. I had to dig this out for years, people, so I'm just giving this to you, all right? This took a lot of digging. They, down in the roots, <laughs> in the root cellar. Brothers of me, belonging to me, genitive singular, first person pronoun, agape toy. Agape toy. Right, agape toy. Now here's the word that comes from agape. This is the word agape. What is that? Love. love. This is divine love. This is godly love. You hear people talk about. There was a guy that wrote a book here a few years ago. Words that don't mean what they mean in Greek. And he said the word agape does not or agapeo does not mean divine love because it's used also in several other places in the Bible where the Pharisees said they love the praise of men rather than Praise of God. Yeah. Now, what is the word agapeo in the New Testament? In New Testament etymology, what does the word agapeo mean? It means something that you will give your life for. You love something enough to sacrifice your life for, to sacrificial love. God so loved the world that he, he loved the world in that way. And in the New Testament grammar, the word agapeo means divine, godly, sacrificial love. Something you will sacrifice your life for. Okay? That's what it means. Alright. Beloved ones. Romans 7, 7 through 14, 2 Corinthians 4 and 4, Romans 1, 27, Ephesians 4 and 4. These are all cross references to this one. Alright? Now, 1 and verse 17. <coughs> Pasa. 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 Dosis. Dosis. Agathe, Agathe, Kai, Kai Pan, Pan, Dorema, Dorema Tilion, Anothen, Heston, Heston, Kata Binon, Apo, Tu, Patros, Tone, Photon, Par, Ho, Uk, Ina, Para, Lage, a, tropes, aposkiasma. Well, this is what a verse here. It's like a, uh, it's like poetry. It has a rhyme to it in ancient Greek. Every good gift, every good giving, all right? Every giving good and every gift, all right? perfect. From above it is. Alright? Every good gift is from above. Alright? Every good gift is from above. The word agathe there, that means real good. Agathos is where it comes from, and that means real good. Kalos is another word, but this that's just common good. This one here is real good. Every divine gift, good gift, and all of this, everything that's perfect, everything that's mature comes from above. Uh, having come down, all right, or coming down, coming down, apo to patros from the Father, all right, having come down from the Father of lights. Remember John the third chapter. <coughs> What's it say about the light and the darkness there? All the way through the Bible, light and darkness. Light is what? Good. Good. Darkness is e yeah. evil. All right, and. Uh, in the book of Genesis, it says, Darkness was upon the face of the dead. Yeah. Barashith bara, in beginnings, Elohim, uh, created Elohim, Heth Hashemayim, the heavens, Leath Haaretz, and the earth, and the earth, Haaretz, Haya, she became Tuhuahuhu formless and void. And then it says darkness was over the whole universe. Alright? Back in, in back in creation, we see Satan, Satan's path in Isaiah 14, 12 through 15. We see God in Genesis 1 and 1 and Genesis 1 and 2. He created the heavens and the earth. And then the earth, she became formless. The translations don't say that, but in Hebrew it says, the earth, she became formless and void. 
And read that for me. Are you there, brother, in Genesis 1 and 1? Yeah. Just read just a few verses. You're you there, brother Harold. Look at this for just a minute. Just think about it. Genesis 1, 1 and 2? Yeah, 1, 1 and 2. And change it as you go. Translate it correctly. And then we'll, <laughs> we'll go down through here. All right? Okay, in the beginning. All right, in, okay, beginnings, in beginnings. In beginnings, plural. It's not singular. Yeah. In beginnings, one of the beginnings. In one of the beginnings, God created the heavens and the earth. Now, my daughter-in-law had a Hebrew with on one side and Greek on the other. Uh -huh. I mean, um, English on the other side. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it said, in one of the beginnings. That's how they translated Well, boy, they did it right. I tell you, in one of the beginnings. All right? If, if even Young's, and, 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 and a lot of them, they will translate the word, that word is a plural. But they don't translate it plural. Why don't they translate it plural like it should be? Because yeah. King James tainted it forever. <laughs> In one of the beginnings, created God, the heavens, plural, not heaven, but heavens, plural, and the earth. And the earth, she became formless and void. Now read on from there, brother. And uh, from where you left off? Yeah, right there. And, the, and, and darkness was over the surface of the deep. The faces of the deep. That's what it literally says. Okay. And the Spirit, God. And, and now look at this, what it says there. It says Spirit God. Ruach Elohim. All right, Spirit God. Not the Spirit of God, but Spirit God. Holy Spirit is God. All right, that's who He is. When the Holy Spirit conceived Jesus with Mary, God did it. All right. Okay, okay go on. Was brooding over the surface kept, of the waters. Kept on brooding. Okay. Kept on brooding over the faces of the waters. All right, go on a little further. Okay. Then God said, "Let there be light." All right. There is light. What's it? Okay. Now, let become light, and let light become. And what does it say? And there light, was light. And there was light, but light became is what it literally says in the English translation from that. You learn a little bit about Hebrew too. All right. It changed from one state to the other. Why did it there? Why did darkness become over the whole universe? Because Satan, sin. sin. Huh? All right. So when we are children of darkness, what are we? Children of sin. John three, John the third chapter now. John chapter three. Who's got John chapter three? Which verse? John. Call it Iwana three. Uh, three and verse uh, 16, 17, and eighteen. All right. God so loved the world and He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him so should have everlasting life. For God, God sent not His Son into the world to them. condemn the world, but that the world through Him might be saved. Next one. I don't know that. Uh, All right, that's the one I want. The light. Okay. Uh, he is in the he is in what? darkness. Okay, read that one for me. Read it. I read it. That's, I that's it right the here. one I want. I got 318. Okay, Brother oh, Harold. John 3. 318. That's the one I want. Alright. 3.18. Yes. He who believes in him is not judged, but he who does not believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Alright, go on a little bit further. Are you were you on seventeen or eighteen? That was eighteen. Oh seventeen. Read seventeen. For God did not send his son into the world to judge the world, but that the world should be saved. Through him. All right. Now, just read right on. There okay. on to about 19. He who believes in him is not judged. He who does not believe has been judged already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the judgment, that the light is come into the world, and men love the darkness rather than light, for their deeds were evil. All right. Men love darkness rather than light. So, what is light and darkness? Darkness comes from God, the Father of lights, Photio. All right? Well, verse 20 there is interesting also. Yes. For everyone who does evil hates the light. That's right. And does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. That's right. Mm. That's right. Why do you think doors, bars are dark? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Bar rooms are dark. Mm. The word. Now I'm going to give you another word here. The word uh, <coughs> uh, Photios in Greek, that is a name. Photios. That name, it is, is a name. For, if you, I would address somebody with the name Photios, I'd say, uh, hey, Photos. I'd say, hi, Photos. 
in English, the word Frank is Fote. The feminine name for that Frank is Francis, by the way. So there you go. Francis and Frank, that means light. All right, light. Francis and Frank. All right, that's where the light, the light. And also where we get our word photograph? The, yeah, photographs that comes from both. All right. Father of lights, with whom not in it. This is really a neat little thing here. This word any, that's in it. All right. For not in it or in him. Not in him. Not in him. Para lage. Alternate. How many of you know what DC means in AC? Electrically? Yeah, electrically. Yeah. Alternating yeah. current and direct charge. Alternating current goes back and forth like that. DC just goes one way. All right. AC, alternating current. It, this word means to alternate, to change back and forth. Now, how many of you have seen a sundial? All right. Now, this is drawing a figure, a figure of speech of a sundial. What does a sundial do? Supposedly tells time. Well, it throws a shadow. Shows the position. Of the sun. There's a, a sundial. Uh, you set it. I got one out in my backyard. It's like this, and it's got a thing coming up. And where the sun is, if it's 12 o'clock, it should be shining just like that. And 1 o'clock, it'll be a shadow over there. And all the way around, all the way around through there, it's not exactly even because the sun shining on the earth isn't exactly even. But you can even change it for daylight saving time, whatever you just move it. Okay, and you can set that sundial. This has got the idea of an alternating change. God is immutable, unchangeable, isn't he? He's unchangeable. Well, because he is God, he is unchangeable. All right, that's one of the attributes of God: it is immutability or unchangeableness. God is God. He's not going to be something else tomorrow. He's always the same. He has standards. He meets those standards. His promises in the Word of God will be kept forever. Paralogia is not alternating is what you said? It, it means uh, alternate. Okay. Not in him alternation. Change or alternation. No change. In God there isn't any change. Or, a little correlative here, trope. Tropes. This means turning, turning a shadow. By the way, the book, the book of James. James is written by whom? Brother written by Jesus. Jacob. All right, it's written by Jacob. That word James is an English word. It should be the book of Jacob. All right, Jacob was a common name, and this is a name of Jesus' half brother. All right, Jacob. All right, Jacob, or the or James. He read. He was well read. At Jesus' table, from what I, I see from his brothers, the writings of them, they were acquainted with all kinds of literature at that time. They were not mushrooms. They didn't just study one thing. They were... Can you imagine being grown up in the house where Jesus was, brother? Brother Walter. <laughs> the creator of the heavens and the earth. And how hungry his mind would have should have been as a perfect human person. You know, he was... He was man and God. But just think about being around him. He could learn everything. And he could know it all. Just think about that. Well, when he was 12, he confounded the Pharisees. Yeah, he confounded the Pharisees. And these were the doctors of the day. These were the doctors of theology in his day. He was confounding them because of his brilliance. He read everything that he'd get his hand on. He listened to everything. And evidently, James uh, was exposed to this. This is the only way in the workplace in the New Testament where this word is found. One time in the New Testament. Tropes. That's it. One time. One time in the New Testament. The word Paula Lage. One time in the New Testament. So here we have two verse, two words in this verse that are not used any place else in the New Testament. No. Why does he suggest that there could be a turning or variation in God? There isn't. There isn't, but why does he even bring it up? <clears throat> to show how stable God is. That his children should be like him. Okay. 
God birthed us, so we ought to be like God. When we make up our mind to follow God, what should we do? We should follow God. When we go out of the pathway, and why was James writing this book? He was writing this to a bunch of Hebrew Christians that were a bunch of half-Christians, so-called. They were wishy-washy. He said, straighten up, go on. They wanted to still go back and do the, do the ceremonies and everything else, and, and he says, believe in Jesus Christ and Him only. And James was a pastor at the book, or Jacob was a pastor at the church at Jerusalem, wasn't he? And he had a lot of Hebrew Christians to deal with, didn't he? And that was one of the reasons that this book is written. These people, he said, get on, get on the ball here, people. Follow the Lord, because God is unchangeable. There is, so are you be unchangeable. The, the figure of speech he draws here, para, lage, a, tropes, apos, skiosma, this is the idea of this sundial. When you are doing an operation, they light up the room, don't they? They light it up. Do they want a shadow? All right. Now, I've been related, closely related to people that are in the movies over the years. I'm a ham operator and uh, it's an amateur radio operator. And I talk to people, and a lot of them, uh, they're either musicians, and they were uh, sound men on the stages. They were also light men. The guy that was light, lights up. I had a, the best boy and all of those people, you know, to do the movies. Now, under the lights in a movie, there's a lot of heat. They had lots of lights. They would use as much light on, a, on a, a movie set as it would in the city sometimes. A small city. It took so much power to, to light the scenes. If you've ever seen some old Roy Rogers movie, not only would they have lights out in the daylight, there couldn't be any shadows. You ever look at movies? There, basically, there aren't any shadows in most movies unless they want a shadow to be there. But most of the time, you can see all the way around them. Now, that's not natural light, is it? It's not natural. Because we, there's always shadows and turning. But in God, if God is light, that means everything is lit up around Him, and the sundial is not going to work. Okay. All right? See, we have God. We don't have natural man. We don't have men go one way and the other way and, and wishy-washy back and forth in their lives. We have God that is stable. When you... Uh, Raise children. Children should see stability in you. You should be true to your beliefs. Always. They should see one person when they look at you, not a triple-faced man or a triple-faced woman. There are so many people that, that have raised children that have made a total wreck out of their lives and their children's lives. You Hebrews should look at you and your wife and see one person. That's right. Hebrews says he is the brightness of his glory. Yeah. The brightness mm -hmm. of the, Jesus is the brightness of, of his glory. Well, when when our children see us, they should see one purpose, one thing. Because a child, when he is young, when he looks at his mother and father, what does he see? The earliest idea of God right. When you are a teacher in kindergarten, I know you've taught a lot of part of your life, Harold. The younger classes, you are really smart to them. When you get up to 6th, 7th, and 8th grade, you're a dumb brother. When you get to high school. Yeah, then you're real dumb. But when you're, you're teaching kindergarten, 1st, 2nd, 3rd grade, I mean you are so smart, and they are learning every day, and they respect you. <coughs> Anything you tell them is, is yeah. absolute. Yeah, it's absolute. Well, your child, when they look at you, should see absolutes. When we look at God, we see absolutes, don't we? And our children have all the right in the world to see absolutes in us, don't they? What if you changed every day? What kind of a foundation would you give your children? Schizophrenic. Yeah, schizophrenic. Multiple personalities. Like putting concrete on sand. Yeah. Bulethes. Bulethes. Verse number 18.
Who lay this? Come on, guys. Who lay this? Abo ki esen. Abo ki esen. Imas. Imas. Logo. Logo. Alithias. Alithias. Ace. Ace. Ko. Ko. Ani. Ani. Imas. Imas. Arkarkane. Arkarkane. Tina. Tina. Tone. Alto, Alto, Katis Mato, Katis Mato. <laughs> Having purposed, this is first verse, par simple, passive. Having calls to be purposed. Having calls to be purposed. First verse, that's really peculiar action, point action, point. Time and time action. Well, participle is one of them continuing things, but when you put an aorist participle, remember what a participle is. It is a marriage between what? A noun and a verb. It has the properties of a noun and the properties of a verb. All right? That's what a participle is. Okay? Having cause to be purposed, all right, comes from boule. That means the wisher to will. All right? Mm -hmm. Now, Love is God's spiritual activating force. That's what this word boule, thela, thelema sometimes. Thelo. Boule. This is one of the words for mind. There, there are five words for mind in Greek. We won't go into all of them at this time. But this is one of them. To think something out. To will something. Now when you will, when you really like sin and you wish it long enough, it becomes a reality, doesn't it? It becomes, it's conceived, it brings forth, and then what does sin bring forth? Death. Separation. The word thonatos there, by the way, was separation. Separation. Having purposed, or having caused to be purposed, he brought forth us. He brought forth us. He birthed us. Now here we have the word again, aborted us. Paul said that he was an abortion, didn't he? On the road to Damascus, he said, I was hell-bent for, for hell, and God aborted me. He caused me, he burst me out of that track and out of that pathway into born him, he was born again. All right? Now it says, having a cause to be purposed, he brought us forth. He terminated the death sentence in us. That's what he did. He terminated the death sentence in us. By what? Or in what? In word of truth. Aletheos. Look at the word aletheos. The word, the name Althea, or Althea comes from this word. Althea is usually a woman's name and it means truth. Her name means truth. Remember there was faith, hope, and love. Remember? The, and a lot of people named their daughters faith and hope and love. And here's another one, Althea, or Althea. People named. And, and a long time ago, that was an old name for truth. The girl's name was Truth. All right? Uh, in the word of truth. Now, in God's word is truth, isn't it? Hmm? That is true. God's word is truth. Jesus was out in the uh, out in the wilderness being tested by the devil himself. How many of you ever had the devil himself test you? <laughs> well, you might have had one of his helpers. I don't know what the devil ever spent time on anybody like us. The devil, went, he was in person testing Jesus. The first Adam was in the, in the perfect paradise of God with everything he needed. The second one was out there in the wilderness. And the first thing the old devil did, he says, and he was out there for how long? Forty days. Forty, days, forty nights without anything. I'm going to tell you something. You go back in that time. Why did God create animals? To feed man. Huh? To feed man. Huh? Why did God create animals? For companionship to man. And then man wasn't totally satisfied with them, so he gave him a woman. All right. Now, Bill, if Bill was here, he'd say, boy, he should have stuck with the animals. <laughs> he's always got something bad to say about women. But animals were created for companionship. All right. That's what they were created for. And then, uh, what did Jesus roam with out there in the wilderness? A beast, the wild animals. He was at home with them. He was. Here's their creator out there. 
communing with those animals. Like Adam was in the garden. In the millennium it'll be that way. In the millennium it'll be that way again. Here we have previews of the millennium right there. In the first garden, Adam was out there. He had the animals and then, then he had woman. All right? Woman means what? Ish. Ish is man. Isha is woman. What does woman mean? Out of man. All right. God took man, a woman out of man. Took feminine man out of woman, out of masculine man. And made him woman out of man. All right? Now these animals, they were out there, and then when, that, when the second Adam is being tempted out there in the wilderness, he has a companionship of a wild animal. All right, they were the ones that were comforting him. The Lord said that he came unto his own, but his own received him not. He came unto his own creation, and his creation received him. Did the wind obey him? Yes. Did the animals obey him? How about that wild donkey that he rode into Jerusalem? Never had been rode before. He obeyed him like a broke donkey. Just like it's been broke. The animals, the, the, the animal world obeyed him. That's a little Indian preaching to you, see. <laughs> but it's, uh, it's some of the old Hebrew ideas there. Just think about that for a while. In word of truth, and then it says, Aisko Amy. All right? For the purpose of ace, extension or limitation of thought or verbal action, that little preposition there, page 119 in the analytical lexicon. Now, this rascal is now talking to me. I don't know how long we've been doing that. Got a few more minutes. On ace, extension or limitation of thought or verbal action. This word here, it should be for the purpose of to be. For the purpose of. You can put down because of sometimes. Acts 2.38. Go to Acts 2.38 and let's translate the word ace there in Acts 2.38. Okay? Right? Acts 2.38. Acts 2.38. That's right after... A Four Gospels. Right after old John there. Caught him on it. Acts 2 and verse 38. Let's look at that word. Let's look at this word ace here. All right. Let's look at that. In King James it says, Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus for the remission of sins, and uh, ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, who was the King James Bible made for? King James. King James. Who's King James? Church, church of England. Church of England. What does church, What does the Church of England believe about baptism? Sprinkling. Well, they believe it's it's salvation. What? Salvation. It's salvation actually. by baptism. All right. It's Sprinkling baptism. was baptism, and okay. Now, for one thing, we got. We get a little bit of the Church of England here. King James told his boys, uh, his priests that were translating this, he said, don't you dare translate anything that's going to go contrary to the doctrines of the Church of England or I'll kill you. All right? And then they came to this verse here. And they had double problems. Double problems with this. Here we have the word ace in there. We're going to see what the word ace is. And Peter said unto all of them, all of you repent. And from Greek, it says, and let each one of you that has repented be dipped. All right, every one of you, dipped. The word baptized, why is the word baptized right there? Why did they change the word because baptizo? Because they just didn't want to say dipped. No, they didn't want to say dipped. Why? Because, because they didn't dip. Because they didn't dip anybody. And they said, if we say dip or immersed, they're going to say them Baptist are right. And why was King James written? They had two problems. They had the Baptists to deal with, and they were preaching the Word of God, and then they had the Catholics. And the Catholics didn't let their people read the Bible. They didn't so, so, huh? What? They didn't well, they didn't Latin because they couldn't read the Bible. Mm -hmm. They couldn't read. That was an educated language. And nobody, no common man could read Latin. It all had been in Greek at one time because Greek was the common language of all men. In 300 and something, around 400, the, the Jerome translated 
the Greek scriptures, and he didn't even do a very good job of that. He just gathered up a bunch of Greek manuscripts and put them together and did what we call the Latin ball game. He took the Bible out of the hands of the people. Baptists kept, kept preaching the Word of God in Greek and Hebrew all the way down through the time. Okay. Old, old Real Baptists preach from Greek and Hebrew today, Martin, by the way. Martin Luther, he got it right, though. He said Tolkien. <laughs> yeah, Tolkien. <laughs> Tolkien. I don't know whether he kept sprinkling. Peter Toffin. He called us Peter Toffers too, yeah. didn't he? <laughs> yeah, but that, Peter that, that, was, that was a derisive thing. Yeah, it was. It wasn't a good term, but that's where we got the term Baptist. Mm -hmm. Because we dipped. All right? Now, King James says, don't you dare translate that word, dipped. They said, well, what are we going to do? We'll just don't translate it all. Just bring it over into English. Then they won't know what it means. All right? Now, what is the word for sprinkle in Greek? Sprinkle. Come on, what is the word for Greek? If it meant sprinkle, what did it mean? Ron Tiso. Ron thank you. See there? Now she's sitting up your Greek class long enough. All right. Now, what is the word for pour in Greek? Pour. Pour in Greek. Ron is sprinkle. Pour is nipto. All right, thank you. What was it? Nipto. All right. I've got to write that up here for you so you can look at it. All right. Frontiso, and it's got a rough breather over the front of it, and then nip toe. All right, there you go. Frontiso is sprinkle, and this one is pour. All right, and this one is spelled like this. Frontiso and nip toe. Spell it in. Nip toe and frontiso. All right. That's the word. If it meant sprinkle, it would be Ron Tizo. If it meant pour, it would be Nepto. And since it meant to immerse, it was Bob Tizo. But they didn't want to translate it correctly, so they said, baptize. There is a, some truth in here in this verse, if we can get it out from Greek. All right? Peter said unto the, all of them, all of you repent, and each one of you that has repent, he gets back into a different person. Let those be baptized, every one of you, in the authority of Jesus. Ace of Ace of Ace of In the Septuagint, Ace of is the scapegoat. What? What is the scapegoat? That's the one that they take the sins. For your, I mean, they slaughter them for their remission. Well, they 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 put our sins upon him. All right, put our sins. Let him go in the desert. All right, let him go in the desert. One of them was slaughtered, and one of them was turned loose. We're the ones that were turned loose. The one that died was that was, that was Jesus. All right. Now. Now, if for or because of the remission of sins. Because our sins have been borne away. Oh, that's why we're supposed to be baptized. That's where ace there. Because we have received the remission of sins. And then it says you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Well, now the way that it's written here, it kind of leads you to believe that you... They didn't want to get very yeah. far away from In Jim. the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. That says be baptized for the forgiveness of your yes, sins. That's right. Why? What do they do then? Because most of the people that are buying that book believe in baptismal salvation. If you find some that's, of them, yeah. that's right. Most of the people out in the world, the reason why it says that, the reason why King James says it, because they believe in baptismal regeneration. Yeah, but this isn't yeah. King James. No, no, but it... Catholics, Lutherans, Church, England. Yeah. All of them. Baptism or regeneration. Mm -hmm. All right. Baptists are the only ones. And not even all Baptists. Just because they got Baptist on their name don't mean anything. All right. A lot of them, most of them aren't even Baptists today. Not even Anabaptists. So then again, what does the original Greek tell us? All right. That? It tells us because we have received the remission of sins <laughs> and be baptized. Because we have received them, and you'll receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Now, what came upon the church at Pentecost? The church was already there, by the way. The church was all out. All right, the glory of God. All right. Now, every individual in the Old Testament, all the way up to Jesus, was saved and indwelt by the Holy Spirit of God, by the Spirit of God. On the day of Pentecost, the Spirit of God didn't come on people, didn't get in people. It was already in people. What came upon those people there on the day of Pentecost. Go back into the Old Testament. 
at the tabernacle, after the tabernacle had been built, what did God do? He immersed it in the Shekinah glory of His presence. All right? The Shekinah glory of His presence. When Solomon built and had the temple built, what happened to the temple? God immersed it in His Shekinah glory. It was immersed in His glory, baptized in His glory, dipped in His glory, immersed in His glory. Now the church had, was meeting there, had gathered together on the day of Pentecost, and had been with the Lord all the way to... Did the church baptize before the day of Pentecost? Absolutely. Yes. Did it have business meetings before the day of Pentecost? Yes. All right. Did they have a treasurer? Yeah. Well, did they have a clerk? <laughs> all these things the church had before the day of Pentecost. church didn't begin there. The church was there. All right? A lot of people have given birth to the church on the day of Pentecost. But at the day of Pentecost, the church was there. What happened to the church on the day of Pentecost? They got tired. They got baptized. What did John say? He shall baptize you what? With fire. With fire. All right. What did it look like? all these people there, the church members, it looks like tongues of fire were setting on every one of them. They had the leadership of the Holy Spirit. That's what you get in the church. Why do Baptists believe in all the foundational doctrines of the Bible and we are all the ones that believe in it? Because we have the leadership of the Holy Spirit. It said you shall receive the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Where were the gifts of the Holy Spirit? I, I guarantee you, out in the world today, it wouldn't be the Pentecostals that had the gift of tongues and, or whatever. It would be Baptists because the Shekinah glory of God is still in Baptist churches today. If they're true. We have those gifts today. Not tongues and all that stuff, but we have what gifts today? Sure. Faith, hope, and love. And the, and the gift of the Holy Spirit helping us to discern what is right and wrong with His Word. That's what it is. All right. Well, I'm going to put you tonight. That's about it. To be the first fruits peculiar of Him creation. We are His peculiar creation. We'll start with that next week. What, cha what chapter, Jim? The one in verse 18. 18 so uh -huh. We'll start with the, from the beginning. One in verse 18. We're, no, we're going to start with one in 18 next week. We didn't cover it as much as I wanted to, but we'll run over it. So we're going to put it right there. Let's have a word of prayer, and I'll turn you loose on the world and go out and do something eternal. All right? Brother Mike, would you dismiss this prayer? Heavenly Father, we come before you again just to thank you for this uh, wonderful day. Thank you for giving us life. We want to thank you for your word. Thank you for Jim giving us uh, his knowledge of your word that you have given him. We appreciate this, Father, and we, we look forward to learning more and learning about you and telling others. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank all of you for your attention. Do you support the um, doctrine of dispensationalism then? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. I didn't think that was good. Oh, yeah. Well, they always did. That was one of our okay. indicators okay. forever. Hunter and Reimer. Charles, what's your last name? Harold Reimer. Harold Reimer and Ron Cochran. Okay, I've been around for a while. and Actually, I... What's I, uh, your occupation? I'm a retired teacher. Um, oh, okay. I taught a VHS at Centennial. Why? I said it was ten. Okay. I was there in... Uh, 2000, 2001. Why those bastards? Calvinism. And then also teach. Actually, funny, I just had an interview yesterday. Teach what? South Well, that's because that's Yes, it is. But he believes he's, he's right on eschatology. Teaching the subject. Yeah. Depending depending on the assignment, you know. He, I want to start a church in well, that chapter, man -sized I will not. but he uh, is, so, so, is stuck so, on that so, Calvinism, so, so. Yeah. Okay. and uh, he wants okay. us to okay. support him. <laughs> what can you do? Well, don't do it. <laughs> Natural. Supernatural means that which is outside of this world. Supernatural beings. live in eternity.
They don't live in space and time. They may operate in space and time, but they don't live in space and time. What are some beings that live in that are supernatural? Angels. Angels and spirits. They are supernatural. Aren't they? All right. Well, where God lives, where, where does God live? Third heaven. Well, he, well, the Bible tells you exactly where it lives in the third heaven. But in in relation to space and time, where is that? Outside of time. When you die, even right now, God has a plan for your life. He can see you glorified with Him in the end. Because He's not limited to space and time. Huh? Coming for to carry you home. He can see you already glorified with Him. Isn't that beautiful? Glorified with Him already. And God knows what you ought to be doing in your life, and He will give you that unction, that, that conviction to do that. You, when you come to church, guess what happens? Conviction from the Word of God. Huh? From the Holy Spirit of God. God tells you. The book of James. This brother right here, I want you to pray for him. He's got aneurysm, and tomorrow you get the results on that. So you pray for Brother Mike. Brother Mike is a, is a responsible character for me teaching you this book of James. He had to have this book of James. Now you've got to hang around, brother, for me to finish this. All right. I got the report today. Oh, you did? Uh, I go to see him tomorrow, but they call me and say it's very slight aneurysm, and they're going to just treat it by my blood pressure. They're not even going to use the medication yet. So it's, it's Amen. Boy, I've been worried about that ever since. That's a, de- that's a deadly thing, people. Now, every one of us can have a time bomb in us, an aneurysm, not even know what he got. He, he found his by mistake. They were looking for something else and found that. Or he's back. So, boy, I'm glad you told me that. Well, you keep praying. We're going to keep praying for you anyway, brother. That made you smile, didn't it? Amen. All right. God has an end result. He looks at us. He convicts us. He tries to guide us in our lives. But that, can, that anointing that we have, that unction that we have in us, convicts us. Can a child of God go the wrong way? Absolutely. Yes. Oh, absolutely. That's because we're human. human. We can go the wrong way. But I guarantee you, God will throw up roadblocks for you mm-hmm. to go the right way. He'll do that. Maturity, perfection, end result, keep on having Third person singular present, imperative, active. Now he says, don't. He said, do it. <laughs> do it. Do it. Keep on doing it. That's imperative mode. Imperative mode is what? That's command. command. It doesn't say maybe, if you want to. He said, do it. What is the date? 29th? 26. 20 what? 26. 26. I don't even know what year it is sometimes. <laughs> I got written 1995. down. 1995? <laughs> well, it was one time, brother. I'm still there, buddy. I ain't leaving. Somebody makes me. It's good to have you all here tonight. Do you have any questions? I'm, 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 that's for as far as I'm going. We're going to finish that verse next week. It's too big. Brother Mike. One, one thing that my was reading in the yes. Bible, it was explaining in the front that uh, the Hebrew language does not pronounce J. Yep. They're silent. So they pronounce it like Jehovah or yeah. not Yahweh. Yahweh or something like that. They're trying to pronounce the unspeakable name. Right. All right. They're trying to pronounce the unspeakable name. Anyone out there? Brother, what is your name again? Gary. Gary? Uh, I hope you enjoyed the class. Hope yeah, you learned something. Much, it's, it's just an introduction to this. We only got one and part of another verse. And got you some background there. Sister Andino, I hope you enjoyed this class. I'll tell you what, the book of James is, is just like uh, uh, down in Mexico, did they have to have to go ring out, out there and ring the chicken's neck and scald them? Well, we're just getting scalded here. <laughs> and getting our feathers picked right off. And just like an old hog, you scald a hog and you scrape him. You get the hair off of him. That's exactly what James is doing. And it's for our good. It's good for us. Some parts are hard. Some parts are hard. Well, we're going to understand the book of James a lot better when we get through here. Do you have any other Do you have any other? Quite Brother Bill, you know, I know you've got a thousand questions. <laughs> no, you know what, Jim? I, I, I'm on my second time doing that book of eight ages. Yeah. 
which is absolutely great because what it does is is uh, what you taught me, and, and that's giving me even a better base. And, and what you're doing is filling in the gaps here with this lesson. And uh, like I say, I had a guy tell me I was crazy this week. He says, you know, he says you don't have too much knowledge because he started telling me something that wasn't right. And I said, no, let me explain it correctly to you. <laughs> so the guy says, uh, and finally, I think he just got disgusted because he thought he'd do a lot. Yeah. And I said, man, I don't know enough. Well, I'll tell you what, when you dig into the to the inspire 